trust issues. He has trust issues. My name is Amaka, 25, and a cashier. I'm currently in my third relationship with a 28-year-old radiologist. He deflowered me and has had trust issues ever since then. Always wants to know where I am or who I'm with. He even goes as far as doing video calls. Is this normal or is he overreacting? Is this normal or is he overreacting? Please advise me. I'm a cast 25. She's a cashier. She's currently in her third relationship with a 28-year-old radiologist. Now, he now deflowered her. And since he deflowered her, he's been calling her back and forth and has suddenly developed trust issues since then. He wants to know where she is, who she's with, and even demands or even asks to do video calls just to prove her location and who she's with. And so Amaka is asking, is this a normal thing or is he overreacting? Is this a normal thing or is he the one overreacting? So please give Amaka some advice tonight. The number to call is 07000-917-917. 07000-917-917. Remember that you can also send a text or WhatsApp message on to 0703-175-6537. 0703-175-6537. Of course, anywhere you are, you can listen via the stream link, www.wfm917. That's also the website, so you can go on there and just listen and, of course, um, follow the program. We're also streaming live on YouTube and Facebook at WFM917. We're also streaming live on Facebook and YouTube at WFM917. Now, remember that when you call in, please ensure that you turn down the volume of your radio. It's so important. Ensure that you turn down the volume of your radio so that we can avoid interference and get good flow of communication going. Thank you very much. Also, ensure that you keep your advice straight to the point. We do not do judging. We don't do condemnation of other people's opinions. And we don't sound accusatory here when people are giving advice. So just give your advice and leave the rest to the rest of the people who want to call in and also give advice. Keep your advice simple, short, and constructive. Short, simple, and constructive. That's what I always say. Keep it short, simple, and constructive. And please go straight to the point. We always put off of the adult conversations WhatsApp platform first, after which we open the phone lines. This message is coming in from Francis from Ibadan. Tonight, Francis is saying good evening to all the adult conversations, family members. Hope our day was great. Tonight's issue is somehow. My advice for you, Amaka, tonight is that she should focus on her job. If her conscience is right, she has nothing to be worried about. Just allow him to continue doing his findings. One day, he'll put a stop to doing those findings. And that's from Francis from Ibadan. A mom with me from Ikorudu is saying good evening, my people in the house. Hope our day was great. To you, Amaka, all you need to do is to let him believe you because of what has happened in the past. So be faithful to him and calm yourself. And that's from Amaomi from Ikurudu. Kola Wale from Ilukeju is saying, Good evening, all. Amaka, my advice to you, if you love him and you're sure he has a future, make him marry you immediately and let him be sure he has you to himself alone. Let him set up a business for you. Please, people, let us dwell only on advising her. We all make mistakes, so don't judge her. All right, Tokwa from Mukurudu is saying, good evening to everyone in the house. I'm going to do everything possible to assure him that there's nothing to worry about as far as the relationship between the both of you is concerned. Maybe his trust, um, maybe his trust in someone very close to him had once been betrayed and now he's afraid of going through the same experience. I can see a loving but jealous friend here. Never do anything capable of breaking his heart. All the best from Tokwe, from Ikurudu. All right, thank you very much. So please keep the messages coming in on the WhatsApp platform. We'll definitely read your messages out on the air. And also the phone line is open. So kindly call in so we can have a conversation and give advice, of course, to Amaka tonight. Amaka is 20. She's 25. 
Yes, she's 25. She's a cashier. She's saying that she's currently in her third relationship with a 28-year-old radiologist. This 28-year-old radiologist, radiologist is the one who has recently deflowered her and has developed trust issues ever since then, always wanting to know where she is and who she's with. He goes as far as doing video calls. Amaka is asking, is this normal or is he overreacting? So that's the question. Is this normal or is he overreacting? So when you call in, Amaka wants to know if this is normal or if he's overreacting. If it's normal, please tell her it's normal. And, you know, that's whatever advice you have to give her, then you give her. But she needs to know, is it normal or is he overreacting? Is this something that people do? Or is this something that he is doing and taking it to the next level? So that's what she wants to know. She didn't tell us how long this um, relationship has lasted for. She just said that she's in a third relationship with the 28-year-old radiologist. Amaka, if you're listening, kindly tell us how long this relationship has lasted and how long ago he deflowered you. It's actually a three-part question. Let me, let me just say it. How long has the relationship lasted? How long were you together before he deflowered you? And then how long ago did he deflower you? The reason for this question is, if you're together, if the entirety of your relationship as of now has spanned maybe two years and you were into the relationship for about a year before he deflowered you, the question, the follow-up question would be, is this how he used to act before he deflowered you? Was he always so possessive and trying to control your movement or trying to monitor your movement before he deflowered you? Or does, did this just happen after he deflowered you, which is the later one year. So I'm, I'm using the two years as an example of what I mean. So Maka, again, if you're listening, please let us know how long ago he deflowered you, how long ago, how long you've been in that relationship for, and also tell us um, how long you dated before he deflowered you. 26 minutes past the hour of nine on your women radio, WFM 91.7. This is a message from Amaka. We're profiling Amaka's story tonight. Amaka's story goes thus. My name is Amaka. I'm 25 and a cashier. Currently in my third relationship with a 28-year-old radiologist. He deflowered me and has had trust issues with me ever since then. He always wants to know where I am or who I'm with. He goes as far as doing video calls. Is this normal or is he overreacting? And that's the question. So kindly call in and give Amaka some advice. If you've ever been in a relationship with someone who's very possessive, someone who monitors your movements, let us know if this is normal or if this is something that Amaka's boyfriend right now is overreacting about. And does it directly link to the fact that she... Um, does it directly link to the fact that he deflowered her? Does that have any relationship to do with the fact that he's constantly monitoring her now? Or is it different? Does it is it not linked at all? So give us some advice. Give Amaka some advice tonight. The number to call again, 07000-917-917. Also send in a text or a WhatsApp message to 0703-175-6537. Hello, good evening. Comrade, good evening. Comrades, have fun. How are you doing? I greet all the whole, our students, all the, our advisors, the whole, the whole world. Thank uh, you so much. Those that are spoiled, I am not say by spoiled today. Hmm. I come back to my car. I come to let the end I come to buy one egg. Those who are with me like a egg of four egg gold. Those who are with me like egg of four egg gold. Those who are with me like egg of four egg gold. Those who are with me like egg of four egg gold. Those who are with me like egg of four egg even to three fifty nine, fifty nine, seventy nine, about twenty nine. Don't know where we will go. Coming back to the story, somebody cannot because I say in this hour, a woman we never marry, we never be perhaps call the insurance or call the what you call intuition, intuition or instinct. So that jealousy, that lie, that one has come. I don't believe in jealousy. He is showing that he is an autocratic man, and if he goes on marrying this woman. This story will be thinking psychologically and sociologically. It will affect her because 
She don't have her own time. She don't. She don't have her, her own life to live. And part of the question when the child talk. Mm-hmm. The question when I don't say whether is he good. Is it normal? Is, good, uh, is it normal or normal. is he overreacting? It's not. Uh, it's not. It's not to say he's overreacting. It's not normal. It's not normal at all. Monitoring you, doing video calls, asking you where you day. That even if I had a concentration, even if I had a concentration camp in in during the one one item for the night, you no, nothing that the night, nothing for the band. You know, you know, you like that. Eh? If you come here and come, this one, I got one million. I got one million to book. You know, oh my, oh my money, oh my, oh my money, but she. Thank you very much, comrade. So in response to Amaka's question, comrade is saying it's not normal. It's actually not normal. That's what he's saying. He's saying in this situation, particularly because he's dating her, he's in a relationship with her, but he hasn't paid her bride price or anything. So um, comrade is saying because they're not married, he doesn't think that Amaka's boyfriend holds that kind of right to just keep asking her where she is at every point in time to be monitoring her over and over again. So he's saying that he doesn't think that that's what should be. He doesn't think that that applies. He doesn't think he's overreacting either, but he definitely doesn't think that Amaka's boyfriend's attitude is normal. So he's saying that she's he's proving that he's an autocratic person and that she should listen to that sign or that side of him that he's showing her. Hello, good evening. Hello, thank you. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Dick and Ben. Yeah, that's me. Thank you very much. Good evening. How are you today? Very well. Thank um, you for how calling. How are you enjoying the studio? Yes, <laughs> you are. Yes, yeah, this person you usually, the sound engineer who you always give uh, credit to. And the lady that left the place, oh, Taiwo, Taiwo. Yes. Okay, yeah. I regard to Taiwo. Taiwo, if you are listening, shout out. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Now, Amaka, Amaka's um, story. I'll look at the story from two perspectives. Okay. And um, by a couple of questions she put forward. First, let us look at how she started this story. She was a virgin, and this is her third relationship, yes. and got the virgin by this present um, boyfriend. Boyfriend, yes. That means she has kept herself until she eventually met this man. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, if you ask me where the suspicion is coming from, I am yet to place my hand where it is coming from. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, let us look at it this way. Trust, when there is trust issue, when we have what I call trust deficiency in any relationship, it becomes difficult to re- really nurture that relationship and make it grow. But having said that, I need us to look back and understand that sometimes people don't do this because the other person is bad or because they themselves, they don't like that person or they don't love that person, no. Let us, can we begin to look perhaps um, a kind of post-traumatic experience the guy had in his past relationship. There are people like that. He might have had a relationship where there are these trust issues. The person was not trustworthy. He can't trust the person. And it does happen, especially when you don't trust anyone. Mm. Um, You want to check their phone. You want to be sure what that person is doing. You want to assure yourself that this person is just for you and for only you. Mm. 
sometimes they are not, it's not as if they are not well brought up. It's not as if they don't love that person, but this is who they are. It gives an assurance that this person is not, you know, out of place. Again, this is not the way to go. But again, how do we help Amaka in this situation? Number one, this is where integrity comes in. Continue being a good girl. Keep on doing those things that have endeared you to this man. So that when he finds any fault and he's not seeing it, he will be the one to assume that, oh, I think I am not doing the right thing. This person I thought is doing this or is doing that. She's not actually what I think she was or she is. He will be the one to call himself to order. Don't also, number two, give him any reason to begin to suspect you. Okay? Hmm. Then finally, I need to advise that a marker should open an open conversation, honest one, with the present person he's going out with, as she's going out with. Tell him how you feel about not trusting you. So, you know, we've made it clear over and over again in this other conversation family that when there are issues like this, the only way to go about it is to have an honest conversation. Don't bottle it up. Don't assume that the other person feels, oh, he can read your mind or mm -hmm. she can read your mind. No. Say it out the way you feel it. Otherwise, if you don't say it, they will assume that this is the normal thing. They will assume that it is welcome. They will assume that you are comfortable with that yes. idea or what would I do? Are you getting the same thing? Say it the way you mean it. Look the guy into the eyeballs. I don't like the way this thing is going. I need you to trust me. I am not a bad girl. I have not done anything to warrant you distrusting me, except you don't this, uh, you don't want this relationship to go far. So say it. Don't mm -hmm. just, uh, I mean, keep quiet and assume all is well. No. And I think there's no, you know, uh, issue if well managed and discussed that cannot, you know, uh, be resolved. So Thank you very much. It is not enough, like she asks. Am I overreacting? I am not in a state to know whether you're overreacting because I am not living there with you guys. I have not seen you react with him to know whether it is an overreaction. No, she, she was but asking whether he it, is overreacting, whether he is overreacting eh? with the constant monitoring. She was asking whether he, yeah. he being in constant monitoring of her movement, whether he is the one overreacting after having deflowered her. That's the question. So not that she is the one overreacting. She's asking, is he normal? Is his attitude normal or is he overreacting? Oh, I get it now. Yes. But can I say something lastly? Something. Okay. When you have a red gel, when you have a gold, <laughs> so you don't want to let go of that gold. Sometimes the guy might be overreacting, but within him, he wouldn't know he's overreacting. Okay, he is imagining this girl. That's his storyline. I'm sure in his whole life, all the girls he has gone out with, he has never met a girl as reserved as this girl. When you say reserved, you mean a virgin, right? That's what you mean. He, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you said reserved. He, he so I needed to be sure that you're girl. saying that by reserved, you mean he has never met a girl who was a virgin. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yes, okay. That's my that's my uh, train of thought, actually. Okay, okay. So when you see something like this, you look at it as priceless. And you know men, uh, you know, when you have something like this, you don't want anything to come close, but that is not too good anyway. Okay, so, that's what I'm thank you. Thank you. Over. Thank you very much. I appreciate your oh. calling. Enjoy the rest of your evening. It's all right, thank you. God bless you. Yeah. All right. Dickin Ben, second caller of the night, and uh, he's saying that it's not normal 
what Amaka's boyfriend is putting up, the attitude he's putting up, is not normal. But he's saying that it's understandable. It's understandable because he probably has been um, has been betrayed before. He's probably has a, he's, he probably has had a bad experience with somebody that he trusted who broke his trust. And now he wants to monitor Amaka's movement. He wants to keep doing that to make sure that she is not fitting in the same shoe and doing the same thing. He also wants to... Um, so he's saying what Amaka can do about that is to keep being trustworthy, keep doing everything that she's doing to keep his trust and make sure that she's doing... that she doesn't do anything that breaks his trust. So after a while, he'll understand that, okay, I'm, I keep monitoring this person, but there's really nothing to monitor because she's very straightforward. He's also saying the fact that she was a virgin um, probably makes her look very priceless before the guy. So he doesn't want to lose her. So he's trying to just be more careful and be more intentional and be more conscious, basically, be more aware of everything that she's doing and when she's doing it and how she's doing it so that he doesn't get to a point where um, she breaks his trust, basically. And then finally, he's saying they need to have a conversation about it, talk about it and have that open and honest communication between, between both parties. And to a large extent, they should be able to sort it out and resolve it at the end of the day. So thank you very much, Dick and Ben. I have a number of messages here. And um, please call in as we read so that we can continue messaging and um, reading messages and taking calls. Cosmas from Ikeja is saying, Amaka, my advice to you is to be faithful to him. It's man's nature. He wants to know where you are. Don't be afraid. Now love shall. That's what he's saying. Okay. Comrade is saying it's not normal at all. He shouldn't be monitoring Amaka. He'll just be using the intuition of jealousy, but he is an autocratic person. He said to Kim Ben, oh, my regards to Ruby Ruby. This is not jealousy, it's autocracy. I'm feeling Dickin Ben. Immediately you start monitoring your woman, she will do the worst. Yes, let Amaka talk her mind. She's a human being. Even Seth, that guy never marry her. He's claiming guiding her or jealousy. Has he promised her marriage? That's a valid question. But even if he has promised her marriage, does that mean that he requires complete transparency and complete um, awareness of everything that she's doing in her life? Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for calling. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Elijah. Elijah from yeah. Sierra Leone. Yeah, yeah. Elijah, I need more volume from you, please. I'm struggling to hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? A little bit better. A little bit better. Can you be a little bit louder? Um, I'm actually loud. My voice is actually louder. Um, well, hello. Please go ahead. Yeah, I you know I I, I think um, I I love uh, some of the parts of you know the uh, uh, comedy. Yes, I think he's the first caller. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I really love what he, you know. Uh, my, I think I will look at in this angle. Uh, you know, I I, I should say uh, maybe the guy is trying the the man in question. You know, is um kind of uh, taking uh, advantage of her, you know, not just fully aware that, uh, you know, he, he maybe the how, how uh, committed the, the lady in question is, you know. But for me, uh, most people are saying she should be committed and blah, blah, blah. I think uh, it, the, the thing is, uh, for me, I actually see that the guy is maybe he's probably taking the girl, the lady in question, you know, Knowing that uh, he's the one that is raging her, and uh, and about a question that is is normal for me, I think it's not normal, and uh, he, the guy is being truly overrated, and uh, sometimes you know you you, you you don't punish a present friend because of a past friend's offense, you know, you let the bygone to be bygone, you know, uh, that is I'm talking about the guy, the guy now, and, yes, uh, you know, yes. Yeah, and the relationship, you know, uh, the value you, you don't have in the relationship, you can't, you know, you can't, you, when you eventually get married, you can't see it because you don't have it in the relationship. So I think uh, 
uh, you, you need to you need to uh, speak to her person and I uh, know what she wants because uh, for me I I should so that you won't get into you know when they not got married and uh, the old depression and everything, you have domestic violence, all this. Thing. So I think she needs to take her time very well, you know. Okay, just for thank me, you I very much, uh, I, I, I think uh, the, the, the guy is being overreacted. I, mean, like, I, I okay. think he's, he's being overreacted. And okay. uh, I think the, the, the lady, Amaka, she, you know, she focus on her, uh, on, on her career for now, you know. Okay. Uh, because, I, 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 yeah. She, thank you very much, he, Elijah. He, the guy thank is being you. Know, overreacted. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. Elijah from Tulare thinks that Amaka's boyfriend is overreacting. He thinks that he's overreacting and he shouldn't take um, some of the things or any betrayals that have occurred in his past relationships into this current relationship with Amaka. He's also saying the only thing Amaka can do is to sit down by herself and really speak to herself, think about what she wants and... Um, Ask herself if this is what she wants. And if this is what she wants, she can go ahead. But if not, he thinks that this kind of situation, if this is happening now that they're dating, he's thinking by the time they get married, he would require even more control over her. And this would possibly lead to domestic violence and it's, things would just escalate. So he's saying Amaka needs to sit down and really ask herself if this is what she wants. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Please, what's your name and where are you calling from? I'm Joy calling from Ecology. Hello, Joy. Thank you for calling. Joy, you're not Thank a first-time caller, are you? First-time caller. First time. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Thank you for calling. Please go ahead. Um, my advice to Amaka is um, the, the guy is jealous is a normal thing to me is a normal thing because i've been in a relationship even my husband i'm married to now he was a jealous type he tries to monitor what i'm doing he wants to hear from me every time mm -hmm. he wants to see what i'm doing even to the extent that because he worked in a telecommunication company and to the extent that almost times if he sees that um i'm too long in a call and he has been calling me, and he feels I'm cheating on him. He tries to, you know, um, go through my calls in his office, and he sees I'm not cheating on him. So it's a normal thing to me. To Amaka, I don't know how long the relationship has been, but if the guy really loves you, because if a guy really loves you, he wants you to himself. He does not want, you know, any interference from any man. And most men are like that. And you see that once that person gets married to you, he's proud of you. He wants you alone. He does not, you know. So I just feel Amaka is a normal thing. To me, it's a normal thing. He's not overreacting it. He just loves you to the depth of his heart. And he does not want any interference from any man so that's my advice to amaka okay thank you so much joy i have a question though and okay. so now that you're married is he still doing this he is doing it so he this calls is not me every something minute, even when he's not around he calls me every minute that does not mean that uh, i don't um, but he calls me every minute and you and you think that this is okay it's okay for me because okay. he knows this because before we are dating, he knows that he told he told me that this is who he is. Okay. He does not like um, opposite sex relationship, as in me having a friend that is a male. He hates it. He, he feels he's not secured with that. And uh, I said, since this is what you want, uh, let me go with it. And that is what he, he does not do same, and right. I don't do same. So. Okay. It depends on uh, communication. And... Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joy. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Joy from Ikurudu, she's calling and she's saying that in this situation to her, it's actually normal. She's saying this because in her own experience, this is something she has also um, had to face. This is something she has experienced. And she's saying she's married to the guy now. And this is something he used to do even when they were in a relationship. He actually came forward and told her that, oh, this is the kind of person 
that I am. And she was okay with it and went along with it. They're married now and he still, um, you know, constantly checks up on her, calls her every minute, trying to know where she is, who she's with. He doesn't appreciate um, opposite sex friendships. So um, he needs to make sure that she's not doing that. So he, she's saying to Amaka that in this situation, she thinks it's normal. So Amaka should just understand that it's normal and that he does it because he loves her so much and doesn't want any interference from any other man. Hello, good evening. Hello, comrade. Hello, it's comrade. Okay. Uh -huh. What I want to tell you is they uh, have to discuss because Amaka is not happy psychologically. That is my intuition. That's what I understand. How can you tell me if somebody likes somebody? Because when they monitor you, monitor when you are passing, monitor your video call, monitor the situation of your life. That one I love. I know when you say that one I love psychologically. Mm. So she should see that man down and tell her, I don't like you. He's monitoring you. Because he, she is not an American satellite. I see you today again that this man, we don't know what I'm going to marry him. He's monitor him. Uh, I know, I know, I know, but this one, I want to tell him love. This one is not love. This one is this one is autocratic and and it's centralized monitoring. Thank you, comrade. Thank you very much. Okay, well, you had that. He's saying that he doesn't think this is a situation where she's monitoring, where he's monitoring her out of love. He thinks it's a situation where he just wants to know what she's doing and how she's doing it and who she's doing it with. Now, to a large extent, um, this. Jealousy, which we've talked about, a number of people have called already and they've talked about jealousy. Jealousy is, is normal in relationships, but the way that jealousy is expressed now, that's the thing that differentiates one relationship from the other. You can be jealous and not necessarily be overly controlling or overly um, interfering in their lives. You can be jealous and just want to know what's going on because there's a level of trust that has to be established within a relationship so is this normal i mean some people are saying it is some people are saying it's not but what do you think hello good evening hello good evening, good evening. Hey, benjamin. hello benjamin benjamin from Agbado. Exactly. thank you for calling how was it fine. Fine. fine beautiful Anyway, what I want to tell Amaka is this. Number one, if this is what she wants, that she, she enjoys the monitoring, I have to sit the guy down, talk to the guy to know if this is his nature. That is what he likes doing. Then if she can be able to adapt with that type of lifestyle, then she can go ahead. But this is my own opinion. And a person that you are dating, whether male or female, if you are dating a male and he agrees you while dating, trust me, when he marries you, he's going to be confused, he's going to abuse you. If he's monitoring you now, you are just dating. If he marries you, he's still going to monitor you while you are still married to him. And people like this have this uh, hyper anger. If they smell a rat, before you try to explain, boom, they are out of control. I can tell you that. So, if she, will, if she can adapt to this type of lifestyle, it's her choice. Well, you have to see the guy that talks to him. But if the guy says, no, this is the kind of person I am, and if I'm not going to adapt to this type of lifestyle, she just put the relationship. That's my own advice. Thank you very much, Benjamin. Thank you for calling. Yes. Thank you. Benjamin from Ikurudu. In this situation, Benjamin is saying that it could be his nature. But if it is his nature, they need to sit down and have that conversation so that he can be um, straightforward with her and let her know that this is the kind of person I am, just like Joyce said her husband did. This is the kind of person I am. If you can, and if she can take it, and then she goes ahead and continues. But if she can't, she, he, she, she should walk away. Because um, Benjamin is saying that these kind of people that monitor people continuously, once they smell a rat, quote unquote, that's what he said, once they sm smell a rat, their anger goes over the roof and they can 
they can react in the worst possible ways because they feel like they've not only been betrayed but humiliated. So in cases like this, he's saying if she can handle it, she should go ahead. If she cannot, she should just end the relationship. Can you get it in? Hello, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Please, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Ziggy. I'm calling from uh, West Park. Hello, Ziggy. It's been a while. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for calling. I listen to your program and I'm enjoying it. Mm, okay. All right. You see, on this subject matter, I've listened to the story and uh, I've tried to make something out of it. Number one, according to the story of Maka, the problem is with his boyfriend. Not a marker. Yes. The insecurity, the lack of trust, the lack of belief is on the guy. Mm. Yes, somebody called us and said his husband also behaved like this. But you should also know something. What works for Mr. A may not work for Mr. B. And marriage has no pattern. Mm, definitely, definitely. Mm, now, this guy in question that is policing her around, he has a trust issue. And Amaka is not finding it money. She's not at home with this guy's attitude. That is why she's seeking our advice. Mm -hmm. Number one, Amaka, this is not normal. People who have this kind of trust issue at times can be very aggressive and they can be violent. Maybe she may, he may call you and he, maybe your phone is on silent or is inside your bag. Before you know it, he began to reason otherwise. And uh, you get him home. He may ask you, I called you and you did not speak. Why? Just for you to say a word, he may give you a slap or something like that. Mm. So in order to avoid domestic violence, which all of us are preaching against, I think you have to sit this guy down. Number one, tell him that you love him and you will not cheat on him. And he happens to be the one that is begging you. For almost, uh, I think you said you are 25 years or something. Yes, she's 25. You have kept yourself until he met you. There are some people who have lost their virginity at the age of 12. Some 14 in this our age. But now you are 20, 25. That shows you are a good girl. Mm, so this guy in question. Relative, okay, go on. This guy in question. You should watch yourself back. Watch your back very well. So know if you have an anger problem. Can you manage it? Because from the tone of your voice, you are not at home with whatever he's doing. You you are not finding it funny. So if I should advise you, try to know if it is something you can manage. If not, I would the, the marriage have not lead to I mean the relationship have not lead to marriage. You can walk away mm -hmm. before the thing turns to domestic violence. Mm -hmm. This kind of person can have an anger problem. Because it's not normal. Mm -hmm. in, in any marriage, if there is no trust, there should not be marriage. Mm -hmm. There should not be even relationship. For him to be calling you all the time, if he calls you all the time, that's a very good one. Maybe he's caring. But this one, video call, whether you are in the saloon, in the church, inside the toilet, then this one is out of it. I'm not seeing love here. I'm mm -hmm. just seeing a possessive person. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so very much, Ziggy. If you can handle it, go ahead. good for you. But if you cannot, it's still very early. You can walk away. Thanks Thank you, a lot. Ziggy. Thank you for calling. So, off of Ziggy's comments, the first thing I would like to ask again 
sometimes I really wish that we get, you know, responses. It would be good to know if Amaka has spoken to him about this before. Has she talked to him about it? Has she expressed the fact that she doesn't really like his new attitude? Now, let's put this into context. When this message was sent in, according to the message, this seemingly, you can, you can extract the fact that this wasn't the case before he deflowered her. I know I asked that, okay, uh, Amaka, you need to tell us if this was the way he was before he deflowered her. But quote and unquote in her message, and when I say quote and unquote, this is literally what she sent. She said, he deflowered me and has had trust issues ever since then. What that would, I, what that would indicate is the fact that before he deflowered her, he wasn't as possessive. He wasn't as untrustworthy. He wasn't as controlling and as, as monitoring as he is now that he has deflowered her. So what changed all of a sudden? Was it that he used to trust her before he deflowered her? And now that he has deflowered her and feels like she has had a taste of what sex is, hopefully it was good sex. And if it was good sex, she's probably thinking, I mean, he's probably thinking, okay, um, now that she has had this, she probably wants to try it with other people because she has not done it before. And if it was bad sex, he's probably thinking, oh, I probably didn't do well enough. And now she might think that, okay, maybe because it didn't work as planned or as much as she had heard about it, she might want to try it out with somebody else. So now he is more insecure about it and is more obsessed with her movements and all of that. And he now wants to find out all of these things, where she is, who she's talking to, just because of something that either went wrong or right during the sexual act when he deflowered her. Because as I said, this sounds like this is something he didn't used to do before he deflowered her. So what changed? What could have changed in that time? Basically, Ziggy is saying, if this is something you're into, you don't sound like you approve of it, so you need to talk to him. You need to talk to him about it. If this is something you can still do, if he can tell you that this is how he is and you can still go along with it, then please do. By all means, if not, remember that what happens in your relationship now will only escalate when you get to marriage. So if you can't take it now, walk away. If you can't take it, know that it will double when you're married. So be ready for that. Ziggy is also talking about the fact that it could also escalate into domestic violence because he says people like this are usually very aggressive. So he's saying as long as you're aware and open and knowledgeable about all of this, if you still choose to stay in the relationship, go ahead. If not, walk away. So that's what he's saying. All right, thank you, Ziggy. Thank you for calling. Please keep your calls coming in. It's 10 o'clock on your Women Radio, WFM 91.7. All right, I still have a lot of messages. Let me quickly run through some of them after I take this call. Hello, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Doing? Thank you for calling. I see you. What's up? <laughs> Okay, there are two people who do this, and I'm always confused whenever you call. I don't know if this is... Oh, let me day. No, there are no, there are no two people that do this. It's only Ralph that does this. Mr. Oh, you see, I literally was going to say, is either Mr. Ralph or Olamide? Why, Mr. Ralph, why are you always doing this to me? Is this intentional? Is this the plan? <laughs> Mr. Ralph, it's good to hear from you. Thank oh, you for calling well, tonight. No, news flag, news flag is always a healing process being with you. And I think it's phenomenal this time I listen to you speak. You know, I, I see you scale up. With, every, with each episode of this thing you run, you scale up and it's incredible. I appreciate I that. It, it's incredible. I'm telling you. I appreciate SDA. that. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're the only one who calls me SDA. Okay. Ah, ah, well, that okay. Means you're like, uh, Namina, na, na, nobody you give me title. You na you na. You need to launch a political, a political party. FDA. Aye, okay. <laughs> I, I will vote for you. <laughs> you see, but you know, sometimes you need to not listen very candidly and uh, look at a few perspectives. Mm -hmm. You see, me Bolan, um, Amakas are usually very exterior people. They're very, very intellectual giants. And they're very, very prosperous. In fact, the, one of the earliest warriors in Ibo land then, the name given was Amaka, one of the early century warriors. But what you have today is an Amaka that's in dire straits. But 
to be very, very, very blunt and very honest. Yeah? Let's see, are you listening? Absolutely. I should be very, very honest and very blunt. Amaka is not, listen, she's not in a relationship. She's not. She's in a situation. Now, when you're in a situation, you have a stalker. This guy is not jealous or no, the jealous, jealousy came out of the word zealousness. Zealousness. That's why by language they are glossy. That's where the numbers came from. The Z came to G. That's why it's called jealousy. But what it means, it means clearly when you have a passion for something. Mm. It's not when you are deleterious to something. But this guy is clearly deleterious towards who we are discussing tonight at the Samaka. So I think it's a stalker. It's not a law. It's just it's just a stalker. That's what it is. And I think the best thing to do is, is but before I go to that, okay. let me profile who Amaka is. Amaka has a true relationship without giving away femininity, which is very good. And I'm sure she has two major points before she got to meet this guy. One, she prayed for a very good caring man. One, two. She also prayed to keep her virginity to the might of marriage. She did not bargain for this. But I'm sure there's some duress. Because the way the thing is now, I think there's some sexual duress that this guy put this girl through. And that is why, these are my own thoughts. And that is why from that night that the act happened, he had increased his appetite for stalking. And he has to do this. So mm -hmm. I think that in my own summation, Okay. I don't think discourse or dialogue will work. You sit him down, talk to him. Because one thing about a stalker and somebody who pretends to be in love with you, but is intent on giving you or on every time to declare you for who, is that when you talk to them, they believe that you are just trying to be there and deceive them. They increase the appetite for that stalking way they do. So the first thing is, Amaka, number one, listen to me. Continue to do what you are doing. Continue to be who you are. Clearly, how? Mr. Let us let okay. However, let me look quickly at something. Okay. This guy is a radiologist. Yes. Amaka is something else. I can't she's, she's, she a she's, she's a cashier. She's twenty-five. She's a cashier. Okay, so this guy, I think socially, there is this, there is difference because a radiologist spends his time in the lab. He does so many things. He's so he's scientific in talk. He's constrained. He might not have a social life. Amaka might be opposite. And that might be what springs forth the one of why he feels that he has to, to stalk this young lady. So I think that you continue to be who you are. Don't I don't think you should spend time. I want to talk to him and all those things might not work in my estimation. Okay. So you be what you are be prayerful. And I think it might go. FDA, I'll see you. I'll, I'll be your face next week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. In summary, I think what Mr. Ralph is basically trying to say is that, number one, their temperaments are different. These two people do not seem like they're the same kind of people. He's a radiologist. She's a cashier. He possibly is very close to being an introvert or is an introvert. And she is possibly an extrovert. So has more social circles and social influence, basically. And this might be intimidating for him to accept because he feels like since the acts, they had sexual intercourse and he deflowered her, he possibly now feels that he needs to increase his need to know where she is at all times, what she's doing and all of that. And he also feels that to a large extent that um, Amaka was coerced into having sex with this man. Again, let me point out that Amaka does not say anything about that. You know, she doesn't say anything about that. But that doesn't mean that Mr. Ralph cannot have his own opinion. So he's saying that it seems that Amaka, I mean, Amaka says this is a third relationship and she just got deflowered. So that, according to Mr. Ralph, he's supposing that uh, Amaka must have prayed for somebody who's God-fearing to give her virginity to and somebody and uh, possibly keep her virginity till the night of marriage. So Mr. Ralph is saying that if the night of marriage didn't work, it must have been from constant um, sexual advances or sexual requests from this man 
that made Amaka wear her resolve down enough to have sex with him. And now since he has gotten that, he wants to make sure that he's the only one who's getting that from Amaka. So he's now further intensifying his, um, his monitoring or his constant, you know, controlling behavior. Um, Mr. Ralph says he doesn't think a dialogue would work. That in this case, he only thinks that Amaka can continue being herself and pray about it. He doesn't think that dialogue will work in this situation. So thank you again, Mr. Ralph. Okay, so very quickly, I'm going to read messages and come back to the phone line. If you're calling, I'll pick your calls right after I read just a number of messages. Comrade is saying, but monitoring her is not the way he should go. He should discuss with her. I told my wife that she should reduce phone ringing, phone pinging, and soap operas, and she stopped. Amaka should face her job after telling the guy that she doesn't like that act. What kind of monitoring be that? As Amaka's boyfriend is monitoring her, let him follow her and be working with her. <laughs> Comrade. He says that man is right. Amaka should sit him down and ask him questions. He has hyper anger. True, true. He's also saying maybe it was monitoring of his former girlfriends that made them leave him with his hyper anger. He says, I love our men callers this night. I'm enjoying the advices. Amaka should not be intimidated by that man. Marriage should be enjoyed, not painful endurance. Amaka, please shine your eye. Some to ride on, but no matter what you said, the man can tell Amaka what kind of person he is. Original situationship. I think he agrees with Mr. Ralph on that. He also says, yes, that psychology. That's why Amaka is asking. She is angry and depressed. If Amaka doesn't talk to him, Amaka will continue to be depressed mentally. Okay, thank you. All right, reading a couple of more messages. This one is coming from Promise B3 from Al 12, who says, he loves her so much, so it's normal. What she should do is to give her boyfriend any doubt of any infidelity by allowing him to make video calls with her anytime he wants to. And that's from Promise B3 from Al 12. All right, this one is coming in from YO from Ikeja, who says, good evening, adults, conversation family. A lesson for all, especially, especially female. We must learn to study a potential boyfriend before going a bit far with them, allowing them to have access to our bodies. An insecure man may be insecure for life, except a mental transformation happens to him. This is the same for some women. How can someone you gave your virginity to still be doubting your integrity? The guy possibly has self-esteem and domineering attitude that you may want to watch closely before you make that life's commitment, despite what has happened in the past. If you can work with him to change for better before marriage, then that would be good. If he doesn't change, apply break until you are sure this is what you want to do or you would like to live with this attitude for life. Okay. Um, okay, there's another message, but I'll take this call first. Hello, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Thank you for calling. Good evening. Oh, my day was good, but I'm struggling to hear you. I'm struggling to hear you. It's like your line is breaking. Your voice is so unclear. I think you should call back. Maybe it's a network challenge. I think you should call back. Is that okay? Please call back because I'm literally struggling to hear you. Thank you. Okay. So this is 12 minutes past the hour of 10 on your women radio, WFM 91.7. This is Adult Conversations where we share real life issues and discuss matters relating to the heart. So now to profiling Amaka's story. Amaka is telling us that she's 25. She's a cashier currently in a relationship with a 28 year old radiologist. He deflowered her. And ever since he deflowered her, he's been developing trust issues with her, always calling her, asking her who she's with, where she is, and even asking to do video calls with her. Amaka is asking, is this normal or is he overreacting? Call on 07000-917-917. 07000-917-917. Also, you can send a text or a WhatsApp message to 0703-175-6537. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. My name is Bob. Your name again, please. My name is Promise. Hello, Promise. Where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Nico. 
from E4, okay? Are you a first time caller? No. Okay, okay. My, my advice for Amaka, the same happened to me, but the guy, even just then that he monitors, he monitors, even the day I went to the market, I don't mm. even know that he's after, I don't even know that he's following me to the market. Understand hmm. the monitoring. I don't see that as it comes to me, but not that like it's okay because being myself, even even I complain, I, I seek advice for too many people, even I regret, I regret. So it's better for her to quit than to regret that one. Hmm. Promise, can I ask what happened in the relationship? Can I ask if this was the reason you broke up with him? Okay, well, promise, thank you for sharing. Even followed her to the market just to be sure that that's where she actually went. He followed her to the market. She didn't know initially, but later found out that she that he, he followed her to the market. And she's saying she doesn't think that this is normal and she doesn't think that it's normal for Amaka either. So she's saying that Amaka should quit it because in her case, she asked a lot of people for advice and she regretted it at the end of the day. So she's saying if Amaka doesn't want to go down the regret route she should please quit the relationship hello good evening hello good evening thank you for calling good evening Santa. how are you i'm very well thank you this is henry from ikorodu yeah thank you for calling how are you today i hope you had a good day thank god bless you for today awesome awesome yeah. Okay, so Henry, let me hear your thoughts on Amaka's story. First and foremost, I want to ask you for, for how long both of that dating before the guy decided to slaughter. Her. Okay, so we still haven't gotten a response for that either. Uh, maybe I would say the guy is, the guy is, is let me just say it's, it's all about jealousy because the guy is for him to lose the lady. Hmm. Actually, maybe the guy I have such, such kind of experience before, maybe along the line, maybe she's dating someone along the line, the baby is dating another guy outside hmm. the gate. And somehow he finds a marker in that situation, whereby maybe she is the one that is flawed, that she understands. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want any other guy to have that privilege or to have that opportunity to even close to Amaka. So that is why the guy is doing all these things he's doing for him to, to secure Amaka from any other guy to get close to Amaka. Mm. And that's speaking because me, myself, I'm married with is speaking even up to now. My wife still uses phone to monitor this. So uh, I'm not. I didn't say worried. I know it's, it's kind of a it's kind of a jealous side. So that is one thing I just believe because the guy is a jealous guy, and it's not that maybe the guy has anything in mind or doing that. But for you to have a video call with your girlfriend or with any, if you're or with your boyfriend, I didn't see it as anything. It, it's not the video call me, that's the challenge. It's the frequency of the it. Challenge? It's the frequency of it. So, for instance, in my head, again, I'm not sure if this is accurate, but in my head, it's like, okay, you talk in the morning, she says, okay, I'm going to work, and then he, you, you, uh, she gets there, you call her, okay, are you, are you at work now? That one, that one is fine. Are you at work now? Okay, we'll talk when you're on break. That's that's normal. But when you're calling in between when she's working, okay, are you still at work? Show me where you are. Let me see who you're talking to and all of that. And then she takes a break. She's eating. You call and you say, okay, let me make sure that you are, you are where you say you are. She steps out with her friends. You want to make sure that that's where she is. Even when she tells you, even when she does something that's relatively spontaneous, maybe with her friends, or she just goes out on her own, you want to know every single thing at every single point in time. You don't think that that's a little extra? Yeah, I don't do. Yes. There's something I want 
I don't think they understand. Okay. This thing happens to anybody. Not especially being a man, being a woman. As far as you are in the love, my dear, you can do on this. Yes, but is it normal? Is that is that what is, that what is supposed to? Is that how it's supposed to be? I mean, there's a level to these things now. I mean, I know there is a level to the guy. The guy may not think he be. He think I'm going beyond control. Are you getting me? Fine. At least it's normal for you to talk to your babe. Maybe higher three times in a day. Check her in the morning, afternoon, and night. It's fine. She understands. Of course. But in this situation, this guy has sex with this lady. Fine. The lady may enjoy the sex. I mean, he may not enjoy the sex. That is number one. Maybe he may not enjoy the sex. Maybe the guy may think he's maybe think maybe this lady may be enjoy the sex. Maybe maybe that's possible. Maybe she can try with someone else outside to know if it's the same thing or not. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. So those are one of those things this guy is trying to prevent not to happen. So what is your so, advice? What's your advice at this point? My advice is for Mata is just she just she calm, just relax, be her normal human behind. Be believe the way you used to behave, communicate with her the way you used to communicate. I believe with with time the guy will realize that maybe she's not the kind of girl she thinks she is. That's one thing I just want to advise her. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Harry. So thank you for it. calling. Thank you very much. Okay. So Harry is saying that for both men and women in relationships, as long as you care about them and love them, he thinks that this is normal. He thinks that this is normal, and he thinks that um, Amaka's boyfriend is not doing anything out of the ordinary. So his advice to Amaka is to continue being the person she is and continue doing all what she's doing uh, and, you know, just just continue basically doing what she's doing without um, breaking his trust at the end of the day or doing anything that makes him feel um, betrayed or anything that makes him feel like she has done something wrong, which would ruin the trust that he already has in her, so to speak. So that's what uh, Harry is saying. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Good evening. I need you to be louder for me, please. Your volume is very low. It's still low, but go ahead, please. Okay, so my name is Franklin, and um, against what Frank, uh, the last caller said... Oh. Pause um, for one I second. Didn't... Pause for one second. Yes, Franklin. Yes. Franklin, right? Yes, Franklin. Franklin, yes. please, where are you calling from? Oh, I'm calling, for, I'm calling from Anthony at the moment. From Anthony. Okay, beautiful. Please go ahead, Franklin. I'm with you. Okay. So, so the thing is, first of all, I didn't even think Amaka is in love. My opinion, bro. Yes. Why do you I say so? Is, yeah. Yeah. And the reason why I say so is um, I, I think she's just attached to the guy being the person that the virgin has, not necessarily because it is the level of this guy. And um, most people usually have this attachment to the person that they have sexual intercourse with, and uh, it's usually difficult to break. I mean, this, this time. And then on the other hand, uh, the boyfriend himself is also not in love with her. And like many people have said, like many people have said, the guy is just, he's just possessive. And um, it's Paul too. At the end of the day, he's going to ruin this girl's life. If he, if he advise her to stay normal, be in the relationship, have this conversation with him. A person like that is not going to change, no matter the level of conversation or the amount of conversation you have with this person. They will not change. I am married. And my wife sometimes calls me to say, oh, babe, you are not calling to check up on me to know yeah. where I go to. And I keep telling her, like, see, I trust you that you are not going to be in the wrong place. The same way you trust me not to be in the wrong place mm. at any time. So why should I call you to check up on you like, what are you doing? Let me give you a call with you. Okay. Let me know what's going on with you. What's going on? Have you been? Are you not, are you not supposed to know you're going to be? And 
and it's not mean that I did not care. Mm-hmm. But she, I said, and she knows that I care and I love her. However, I'm not going to. She had the lie before me. And she should have a life with me. And of course, she will always have a life even after me. Hmm. Even though we say yes, we say they do us part. And whoever goes there, that should be a life. So any person that you are with and is gaining life out of you and is gaining your peace of mind, I mean, for your own health, mental health, as you like to talk about this day, mm-hmm. you, need to, you need to free yourself from that thing. And I do not think Amaka is in the case there. She will have a healthy life. It is all only going to end in tears. And this is this is how um, domestic violence starts. Mm-hmm. That is, it is not already different now because it's going to get to a point where um, some patients, maybe at the office or among her friends, like she says, some spontaneous mm-hmm. stuff comes up and then it's going to violence on her. So, so I mean, my opinion. Let her work out of that relationship. Mm-hmm. I, I know how it is. I mean, sometimes we get attached to these people because we, we think like we've shared a very important part of our life. Or with, our with, with the person. With, with this person. Yeah. So, so, um, so that's my take, though. Okay. Let I appreciate you calling. Thank you. Thank you so You're much, welcome. Franklin. Okay. So Franklin is calling from Antony and he's saying in this situation, he doesn't think that either Amaka or her boyfriend love each other. He's saying he doesn't think Amaka loves her boyfriend. He just thinks she's comfortable with the fact that they have she has given her virginity to him and now she's attached to him. Uh, he also says he doesn't think that Amaka's boyfriend loves her, but he's just possessive because he was the one who had the privilege, so to speak, of deflowering Amaka, and so he doesn't want any other person to have access to that part of Amaka since he's the one who deflowered her. So according to Franklin, he doesn't think that either of them love each other. So he doesn't think that technically they should be together, but he's saying in this situation, he doesn't think that talking about it will solve it, but he thinks that um, Amaka should, should walk away from the relationship because he's saying that people like this are the ones who potentially... Um, violate their physically violate their spouses at the end of the day because of maybe their tempers or the kind of temperament that they have. So he's saying that if something happens and Amaka goes out spontaneously with her friends or does something, or even like Dick and Ben said, if her phone is on silence and he can't reach her, before you know it, he assumes that she's cheating or she's doing something wrong and then it leads to domestic violence. So he's saying he's advising that Amaka should walk away. So that's from Franklin, from Anthony. Hello, good evening. Good evening, thank you. Good evening, thank you for calling. Please, what's your name or where are you calling from? Ray, calling from Belga. How are you? Hello, Ray. My day was good. My day was good. How about you? My day was good. Awesome, fantastic. All right, please go ahead, Ray. Right. Um. I just want to ask what Franklin said because he actually almost spoke my mind. Mm. Now, the truth is, God is a jealous God. Yes, I know. And every one of us has um, a bit of jealousy in us. Now, the thing is, why would, why would you have trust issues with someone in the flower or everything. Now, it sounds like I cannot love you and feel without you, you are not trusting me. Not possible. Mm. Now, what I think is that guy is, is going to be a domineering person. Mm. And just like Franklin said, if I don't know what Amaka won. Because to me, I will not advise Amaka to go ahead and continue with that relationship because if she does, by the time they are married, it will be worse. Hmm. And just like Franklin said, these are the kind of things that lead to um, domestic violence. So you know, if that guy has never started beating her at the moment, 
So I don't think I don't I don't feel safe within me that Amaka should continue that she should just step out, step just step back. I don't say please for your own mental health. Now I have an example. I have someone who is um, going out with a guy. Now that guy has he doesn't even trust her compared to Do You understand? Okay. Whenever he sees her with anybody, he doesn't even know who this person is or what. They start complaining. There was a time he, the guy saw this young lady with her younger brother, no, with a friend who is not, there, there's nothing even between them. The person is just like, she sees the person like her elder brother. Okay. The guy started complaining. And this girl couldn't take it. She just said, see, if you cannot trust me, I don't see any reason why I should continue with it. Because mm. if you see me with my younger brother or my my mother's younger brother, I don't know what to say. So for my own sake, I will say, please, the end of the relationship. So I just think that my passion is everything. There's nothing to all that guy and say, I want to sit and talk. Because I don't know if they will listen or not. Yes. We cannot say for sure if he will listen or not. Yes. We can't say. Because this kind of attitude at the end of the day, he's not even married to her. If she goes ahead with this relationship. We don't even know what will happen at the end of the day. You understand? Mm. So I think it is better for Maka just to draw for your for your family's sake. Withdraw. Okay. You get somebody who will trust you, who will love you, who will trust you. Even when you tell him this is where I am, you believe that this that is where you are. Thank you very I, much. I, I, that was the time I had a relationship mm -hmm. with a guy. The first thing I told him was, that guy, come. I know you are a lady guy. Or listen to me. When you see me in the midst of guys, that will happen, no shooting. I grew up in the midst of boys. If you see me, you think I'm a, I'm a guy. As in some people, if you see me now, mm. you think I'm a guy. You have to look well before you know that, oh, this is not a guy. Mm. I grew up in the midst of boys. I, as in, I grew up in the midst of boys. Just for everything about me is just like a guy. So I told him, oh, God, calm down. You see me in the midst of boys, no shaking. But because he was having trust issues, for me, I don't want to have a problem. I cannot speak fight, and I can't. Mm. So, Amaka, just walk, walk away from this relationship. I don't think it will work, just like something said. Just, just walk away, I beg. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Ray. Thank you for calling. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Okay, okay Ray from Badger. Uh, Ray is saying to a large extent, that she doesn't think that this is going to stop anytime soon because this is something that he has been doing and this is something that he doesn't it doesn't look like he's going to stop. So he's saying she's saying that this is a matter of trust and he simply just doesn't trust Amaka. And Amaka there's nothing Amaka can do to make him trust her if he still has trust issues. And she also agrees with Franklin who says that he doesn't think talking is going to work. She can try talking to him. Initially, she says she's sure it's not going to work. That's why I say you can't be sure. You can't see if it's going to work or not. To which she agreed that you actually can't see whether it's going to work. But because you're not even sure if it's going to work, it's just like, why am I even talking to him about it? So she's saying if you can't handle these lack of trust issues, if you can't handle it, and you know you're always going to be in a situation where this comes up, She's also saying this is happening now in dating, in relationship. When it gets to marriage, then what happens? She's saying to prevent you from being a punching bag in future, walk away from this relationship now. Thank you very much, Ray. Comrade is saying, I beg nobody should generalize men. Now my wife, the money told me now, says, instead of me, me that deflowered my wife. I would have followed her to U.S. last year. Oh, that's true. Kamir's wife went to the US last year for a number of months and he didn't go with her. So I think that's what he's making reference to. Uh, he said, you must be in love 
for the person that the version view, yes. But monitoring and cough, I think it's replying to um brain over that. Okay. Hello, good evening. Hello, Santo. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, please. What's your name and where are you calling from? Desmond from Ikorodu. Desmond from Ikorodu. Desmond, is this your first time calling? No. I, I don't they call you for long. No, that's eh? Nah, plenty no problem. We got the retreat voice much more. God help us. <laughs> no problem. How you doing now? How things? I do. Thursday. 